Jay Thomas Show. The Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. So I rush home yesterday, and uh, I know I just start talking. I know I just uh, people go. Uh, don't you ever say hello or anything? No, I don't. I don't fucking say anything. I don't care about hello. Um, you know, <laughs> if you're all right, I'm glad. If you're not all right, it's none of my fucking business. Uh, hey, having a nice day? Hey, it's a fabulous Friday. I don't give a shit about your Friday. How are the freeways looking money. today, Jay? How's that Who weather cares? out there? Who gives a shit? I don't know. <laughs> what are you guys up to this I weekend? Mean, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ira. Uh, I'm at I'm at a radio station in L.A. and we have all the we have the news, we have this, and we have the helicopter guy, and we have we have a woman um, whose name is Tammy Trujillo. Oh, I remember and Tammy, Tammy Trujillo. Trujillo. Yes, but yeah. wait a minute, Tammy Trujillo had married a Mexican guy. She's probably still in L.A. Danny Trejo. No, Trujillo. Trujillo. She Trejo. married a, It got really she weird. Married a, she married a Trujillo, and I believe they got divorced. Right. So I had never seen Tammy Trujillo, and I used to think, you know, I know why she got her job. You know, she's Mexican. And people would say, of course, that's why, you know, because it was when you had to have these quotas and everything else. One day, Tammy Trujillo comes walking into the radio station. <laughs> she's, she's, she's five foot ten inches and speaks fluent German, okay? <laughs> she is this blonde, you know, Nazi. Uh, looking person, not a Nazi. And I go, you're Tammy Trujillo? And she goes, yeah. So the next time she's on the, you know, hi, this is Tam from the helicopter, or whatever, I go, hey, baby. I mean, I just went crazy. <laughs> I was mad for her. And, um, and so the weathermen and all that, they never get to say anything about their lives. I would stop in the middle of their Insta weather report and go, Bill, Yes. Bill, I mean, are you married? Do you have a family? Uh, uh, y- yes. I swear to God. Do you ever hear the weathermen or anybody on a news station ever tell you about themselves? Ever. Never. It's the weirdest. How do you go to work every day and go, thank you, Bill. The weather this afternoon, blah, blah, blah. I'm John Johnson. And you, you don't know who the people are. You don't know who they are. You're basically saying, you gotta, nobody gives a shit about I, you, Bill. Thanks. Now, moving no, on. No, but I did. And no, I'm saying everybody else. Personality. Right. They right. did. We, and the squarer, the better. Hey, Bill, get laid last night? Oh, my God. It's over <laughs> when you say that to him. It's I don't over. think that's an appropriate radio conversation, Jay. I mean, I'm taking full credit for inventing Charlie Steiner. He was my newsman in uh, New York. And, you know, he became the famous sports announcer. You know, he was on uh, ESPN for years. Remember Charlie Steiner? Sure. Uh, Legend, then he man. became the, 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 the uh, announcer ESPN, for the Yankees. I mean, everything. And, and boxing and everything yeah. else. Yeah. And he got in a fist fight over John <laughs> McEnroe. Did you know that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's in London, and some guy's yelling about McEnroe, and, and, and Charlie gets in a fist fight over him. And then afterward, Charlie says, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even like John McEnroe. Why was I in a fist fight? <laughs> Charlie's a no well, shit kind of guy, huh? Charlie's now with the Dodgers. Yeah. So Charlie comes in from Cleveland, and we're at this uh, top 40 station uh, called 99X. This is Charlie Steiner, and he does the thing. And so I don't really know the guy. It's early in the morning. and we're... So a couple, three weeks, four weeks passes, and I'm in a bar. And I meet this woman in a bar. And I go, hey, um, what do you, she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm a disc jockey. She says, where do you work? I say, I work over at uh, 99X. She goes, oh, a friend of mine works there. And I mean, this is some like hot, maybe even a hooker. I don't know what she was. I go, who is that? She goes, Charlie Steiner. Oh, booyah. And, and I go, right, I booyah. I go like this. You know Charlie Steiner. Well, I don't want to go into it, but cock rings were mentioned. Um, before the conversation was over. And when I got to work the next day, I said, Hey, Charlie, I met somebody named uh, Dolores yesterday. Ring a bell? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did it all. I did it all. <laughs> and, and so he goes, what are, you, uh, what are you talking about? I go, I go, Hey, ring a ding ding. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and uh, we started having more fun. He goes, God damn it, Jay, don't say that cock ring thing. Please, it's not true. It's not true. I go, yeah, I met a woman in a bar. She says she used cock rings. I mean, why would she lie to me? Never met me before. <laughs> um, so where was it? I turn on the TV. You're Can't wait to bar. see the draft. 
I know. Shut up. I can't wait to see the draft. I turn it on just in time to see Ha Ha Clinton Dixon. Draft. I thought I was seeing shit when I saw that scroll across the bottom of the screen. I'm like, does somebody name their kid Ha Ha? He's from Alabama, I think. I don't oh, know who well, drafted him. Ha Ha that. Clinton Dixon. Now, I remember that he played for them, but usually I'm betting so much. I don't. I, I'd like you know if, if if they're winning, I want them to win. If they're losing, I hope they all die of something before the game is over. But yeah, he played for Alabama. I don't know why he's ha ha. I don't know. Oh. Is he part Chinese or something? Do do we? Can you can you Google that and find out why he's? Uh, his grandma uh -huh. gave him that nickname when he was 12 or something, or 10. Yeah. I heard it was Jackie the Joke Man's kid. Is that true? <laughs> ah, get over here! <laughs> Every time I hear anybody say Jackie's name, in my head I go, what a fucking idiot. Well, that idiot's a big fan of yours and listens every day. I know he does. His real name idiot. is Jack Martin. Yeah. Hashan. Ooh, okay. Hashan. What is it? H A apostrophe capital S E A N. Oh. As a child, Hashan's grandmother nicknamed him Ha Ha. Don't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Are you mad at him? Are you right. calling him? Good afternoon, uh, Shane. <laughs> Good afternoon, Shane. Uh, this is Sunday is going to be yeah. a beautiful Sunday for all the mothers. In this whole niche. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest gift you ever gave your mother, Ira? I gave her flowers. I gave her everything. Wow. I treated and her. You treated her, yes. your mother. Did you ever buy your mother dinner or brunch or anything? Yes, I did. did. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, I Where did. would you take your mother? Where would you take her? Uh, Dollar Italian pizza. food. Italian food? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And now your mother, your mother's passed on, right? Your oh no yes. Longer with us. Oh yes. She's gone. Oh, she's yes. gone on. And you still live in the apartment that you were raised in, don't you? Uh no, a different apartment. Oh, you weren't raised yeah. in that apartment. I thought your mom and dad lived there with you. No, no, never. No. How is no. Irma? What's her name? The woman Norma. you know? What's her name? Uh, so, Norma. So, so, Irma. So, so. Now, is she still living there? Yes. Can't okay, around, I want everyone huh? to listen to this. There is a woman named Norma that lives in Ira's house. He claims his brother didn't hire her. She's not there to take care of him. And he's never, this is years now, has never been able to explain who we she is. We don't even sleep together. <laughs> Does okay, she give you money for rent? Well, she gives me money if she wins. Wait so a she's second. a gambling. Is she your she's gambling addicted to gambling. Partner? Huh? She's your gambling partner? No, we don't go gambling yeah, together. On. She'd get me too Wait. god darn nervous. <laughs> Where does she sleep? Duh. Where does she sleep? She sleeps in the living room. <laughs> for how many years? This has been around for seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten years. <laughs> ten years. Does yeah. she cook for you? She just showed up. No, I don't even need her cooking because what she cooks, she took, yeah. she cooks a lot of carbohydrates, which I don't yeah. eat. <laughs> carbohydrates. So you have eat. a woman pretzels, pretzels. That, that what? Oh, uh, it's a squatter. You, he has a squatter. I don't know what it is. Is your brother upset that she lives there? No. Is your brother? No. No. Has she Does ever... your brother know that she lives here? Yes. Yes. Do you exchange gifts I think gifts your brother with each other? She hired still her. has her other what? apartment. <laughs> okay, Ira. Why is she there? Did you invite her to live there? No, I did not. She did came she... up there. Did she come with the apartment from the she previous up... tenant? No. 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 Does she right, ever have a, a man over? <laughs> Does she entertain other men? No. Is she fat? She's happy a little she bit. She eats carbohydrates, heavy. Jay. What if do you she, think? Would if you she, say, is she, is she 60, 50, 70, uh, 50, 40? 70 years old. 50, no. 50, 50, if, she, years old. if she played football. You know, football, a cradle robber, you? You say she's heavy. If she played football, what position would she play? Uh, back. <laughs> back. You about to say center. Running back. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, what movie star does she look like? She doesn't look like any movie star. Does she look like Steven Seagal? No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Has she and ever, so has she ever, ever <laughs> given you any kind of uh, uh, sexual Affection? favors? Satisfaction? Affection. 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 
Never. Have you guys ever kissed? Once. What? You kissed her once. She moved in 10 years ago, and that's it. That's it. That's what, it. Do you ever want her to, do you want her to move out? Do you want her to ever come up there and get her out of there? Well, if you could get her out from there, that would be a great, great I can job. do it. I can do it. I'm going to be back late July. Uh, we're going to go. Um, by the way, we've been invited uh, to the uh, Lack of Testicles Golf Tournament. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. It's for people that have lost a testicle, and it's to raise money for them to buy. Where is this going to be at, Jay? It's going to be... Um, Scarsboro, uh, New York. Yeah, New York. I may bring you with us. All we right. We got to take one of your cart. You and Christina will ride around in the cart. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, boy. And, oh, boy. Shout right. out to Ha Ha's sister, Hee Hee, <laughs> and Uncle uh -huh. Ho Ho. Ho. All right. <laughs> Shout so out. We've... <laughs> the show has begun. We're out of the gate the show, now, baby. Yeah, we're out of the gate now. I mean, really, for those of you that are listening, we don't know who this woman is, and and we're all Never stunned. Seen it's, 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 listen to Gar Garrett. To is speechless. <laughs> Garrett is speechless. He's not even. He's no saliva is coming out of his mouth. He's so shocked right now. So no, he doesn't uh, have any saliva coming out from his. You mouth. You should literally, Jay. You should call in from his apartment. And, I'd love to. And confront her right there, like an old Geraldo, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you storm the fucking apartment. Yeah, we'll apartment. bring a camera. No, what, no wait a minute. Like cheaters, what was that guy? The squatters. <laughs> oh, no, what, what about that? <laughs> no, that guy that would catch guys uh, trying Chris to Hansen. screw young Chris girls. Hansen. Oh, Chris yeah, Hansen. I knew yeah. Chris Hansen. So I would come in there and I would go. Well, hello. Hello, Norma. But Ira was here. No, no, Ira's not here right now. <laughs> to you're catch a here. squatter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or you're just... here right now. Just... Watch this. And I have a I have a clipboard. Is your name Norma? You know. <laughs> Ira, show up in a sheriff's hat and tell her she's evicted. If we called your house phone right now, would she answer? Is she home now? Maybe she would answer. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Now, if you have her come on... You got to tell her she's going to go on the radio. Does she know you're on the radio? Oh, uh, yes, she does. All right. So does she find that to be like? Does she treat you like a star? Does she think you're like a star person in maybe her life? She doesn't treat me like maybe. a star. All right, maybe she doesn't. Uh, in a little while, we'll be heading to Ypsilanti, Michigan, where somebody in the evening shits on the playground slides, <laughs> human shits, and the next day when the <laughs> Little mommies come to the playground, which to me, and I'm so glad that's over, was the most disgusting part of my life. I'm sure he's going through it now, where you have to go with the brats to oh, the let me playground. Tell you something. We, my wife uh, stopped by a park by my daughter's school the other day. It was oh, yeah. it was no different from a third world country. The only thing missing yeah. from this park was was a downed Black Hawk helicopter in the middle of it. It was yeah. these kids were animals, animals, and I we got there, and in 30 seconds, I mouthed to my wife from across the park we are fucking leaving now i was ready i knew i was gonna punch a kid and there was gonna be a kid that was gonna hurt my kid and i'm gonna punch him so let's get out of here well um there's a guy who um at night uh shits and he won't stop doing it and they can't catch him so there's a ad agency there that's put up outdoor advertising in the ann arbor area which must be near ypsilanti encouraging the public to turn in the mystery pooper <laughs> So we will be talking to him. Now, years ago, many of you may remember this, uh, there was an, uh, what was it, a Denny's, uh, in, was it Idaho, Garrett? And there was a guy under the bridge, and he would shit every night, and uh, the people that would go into the Denny's, uh, <laughs> could smell the shits or whatever it was, and ah. we would interview this all overnight waitress. By the and, way, if you're in a Denny's, um, you can't decipher called. shit from, from anything well, else. Why would a Denny's be that close to the under the bridge? <laughs> the yeah. And then from the super fan world, um, uh, uh, this forty-year-old virgin from Georgia, uh, who Nothing comes says from, super from fan Stern. like never fucked before. I'll tell you that. Here's what's weird, and you know, you guys always wonder why do I, and I do. I read stuff that I'm truly not really that interested in. I just read in in a magazine called Mind Magazine from you know. 
you know, I don't know what, uh, Smithsonian Institute or something. They just did a survey on virgins. And I, I thought, well, when would I use this information? And here it is. Only about, around 40 years old, only about 1% of the population at 40 years old is a virgin, male or female. Only 1%. 10% of that 1% are um, hugely overweight people and or people that have um, some sort of a like a, a weird thing that can't be touched or whatever. 7% of that 1% virgins are married. Isn't that weird? They're married to someone. They're still virgins. What the fuck is that about? I don't know. It didn't. It, you know, it's weird. It didn't what are they explain married to, it. Norma? I don't know. Yes, there I know. Well, do you know who this guy is, uh, Shirley? Do you know who he is? This guy, uh, Jamie Foley? This virgin you know I'm not familiar with. Uh, I, I have a good friend of mine who's also in his 40s and is a virgin. Uh, yeah. Brandon? So, what's that? Brandon? <laughs> no, not Brandon. <laughs> uh, but a guy I know named Lenny who, uh, who lives in Long Island, and, and he's a virgin. He's actually gone to prostitutes twice, ah. and something's happened both times <laughs> to keep him from closing the deal. And uh -huh. it's and, and it's it's as if God does not want him it's to get laid. It's because of the van. I'm well, convinced it's he drives a van. No, he got a van. You know what a van says? Virgin serial mm -hmm. killers. Yeah, no, says. he didn't have a van. He had a Volvo. Oh, okay. Uh, and during well, I, the first time I went to a prostitute, I was about 16, and I was trying to do something, and a chicken ran over the back of my legs. <laughs> One of my favorite and that stories. Stopped it is, and uh, Gummy Mary. My favorite and, part of the story is when is when you finally walk in the room, you're nervous as hell. Everybody oh remembers God. their first time; they're fucking terrified. I paid one dollar, put it on the table. One dollar on the table. Condoms. And what? And what? And what's the quote she said to you about after you're she done? She says to me, uh, "She says to me after you're done, <laughs> throw the scumbag in the shit can." <laughs> I'm 16 years old. I'm a Catholic. I was taken the there by my, by my public school friend, David Halen. And there's guys, there's cars lined up, all going to get laid. But no Catholic kids that I know are there. There are all these public school kids. And I stand at the edge of the bed of this really horrible room. And she wasn't old. And she had a really kind of an interesting body and had no teeth. Her name was Gummy Mary. And, and, and she said she was only doing it because her husband was sick and needed money for the hospital. That's a, that's and a I'm at the edge of the bed trying to get the condom thing open. And she says to me, when you're done, throw the scumbag in the shit can. And that's all I could think about the rest of the, because I'd been given instructions and I didn't know how I would carry these instructions out. And so I get the thing open. My flaccid penis will not allow the condom to come on. She says, hurry up. And she grabs my dick and she starts shaking my dick all over the place. I am so nervous. Awful. And she's shaking my dick. My dick is about five inches from her face and she's going with no teeth. You know, I'm only doing this because my husband's sick. Like that. And she takes my dick and she licks the bottom of it and start. And what, nobody had ever touched my dick, licked my dick, oh. nothing. I'm finding all of this to be. I might as well have landed on Utar, the planet of Utar, and I'm being t taken to the Utarian castle, uh, and I and they're putting shit up my ass. So I get on top of her, and I'm pulling my own dick. She pulls her dress up. She goes, "Hurry up! I got clients awaiting." Uh, she says, "Awaiting the word right. awaiting." And and then and so I'm still thinking scumbag shit can. I don't know what that means. And I start to try to pump a little bit. My penis is absolutely not hard. I'm starting to pump a little bit, and all of a sudden, I feel talons on the back of my head. Oh, my God. And I think, I think that someone's come in, or the police, or something, and I look, and a chicken has run across the back. She has some chickens. And she says to me, Obviously. what's the matter? You know, she says, what's the matter? You don't like fresh eggs? I go, okay, look, keep the dollar. Thank you. So I get up. I pull you know, my like fresh up. eggs. Mine are all scrambled, hot shot. <laughs> I walk outside, and my buddy and four other guys are waiting. They go, "How was it?" I said, "Great." <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody says. Absolutely, oh best pussy I've ever had. Ah! I said.
<laughs> and and wait wait till she puts your dick in her mouth with no teeth. I oh, go ha cha cha. Yeah. I only wish I had a Sherry's Berries commercial to read right now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll have a virgin on later. Um and we'll find out if he if he fits the thing. Is he fat? We'll find out. Is he fat? Does he have this kind of doesn't like to be touched kind of a thing? You know, there's something. You know, I've heard he has a ten inch penis. So what? What? It doesn't. It doesn't work. All right. That doesn't mean anything. Why not? Yes, it doesn't. Doesn't mean. And nothing. now and and then later, it's Zach so uh, uh, Zach Bissonnet will be here. Uh, his book is Bad People, Selected Wisdom from Murderers, Stock Swindlers, and Lance Armstrong. He takes wisdom from evil, and he's written a book about what <laughs> evil people have said that is actually wisdom-filled. Let's go to Joe, who is near the playground right now in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Uh, Joe, uh, do you have small children? Hey, Joe, how's Mo doing? <laughs> uh, you're ready. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, the uh, show has started. Okay. Yes, hey, um, Joe, Joe, I, I, how, how not, close are you to the playground? How close are you? Uh, probably about a quarter of a mile. It's uh, right up the street from the house I live in. Um, it's around the corner from my subdivision. I can see it right. from my backyard. And, Do you I know mean, about had, the, uh, the, po the mystery pooper? You know this? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, people are on, uh, you know, 24 hour watch in that park trying to find out who this person is, is, you know, taking mystery poops. You know, it's hilarious to me. I don't have any kids. I don't have any kids, so I can give a fuck, you know? Yeah. I got There's you. much worse things going on in playgrounds than people shitting on slides, by the way. You go right. in there, you see, right. I've, I've caught kids fucking smoking and drinking, and it's like, and I'm like, dude, pass it over here. My kid's not fucking near me. Let's get, right. let's get it on. This same, this same park had a used condom epidemic about three years ago. <laughs> uh, there were used condoms all over the park. Wait a minute. So, this isn't the famous scumbag park, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Um, no, I, it's, it's a weird thing. You know what I mean? I, I don't remember when the last shit was taken, but... Uh, yeah. It, 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 it's crazy. Like people are out with surveillance cameras, and uh, there are guys with night vision goggles are standing in trees. You know. Well, you know, years ago at this Denny's in Idaho, and I'm not joking, the cops started putting. Uh, I mean, they did everything. Same thing. They had they had cops with with night vision goggles and cameras. And, this thing went on for a couple, two, three years. They couldn't catch this guy. And and it is odd. So this guy has figured out, what, the rotation? And he shits on the slides anyway. That's so crazy, isn't it? It's like a Zodiac a shitter. Yes. There's a, there's a wooded area. I think he's taking a shit in the woods and throwing it into the playground area. See, I disagree. Well, about you, Joe? Joe, you almost have a special victims unit idea of how it's well, nobody nobody's seen them and they've got video surveillance of the park you know what i mean yeah, who's not working the graveyard shift to stay awake and catch him i, don't I could do the decent it. thing yeah. and i feel shit like in, i can find him in five minutes do the decent thing yeah. and shit into a condom you know make it easy there for everybody <laughs> and then he can throw well, joe farther. Ypsilanti, i know you'll That's be listening in a few genius. minutes thank you very much joe of ypsilanti okay shame um what I'm not a virgin anymore. I broke right. my hymen slipping on the ice this winter. <laughs> also, Me too. Shout yeah. out also. to Ha Ha's brother-in-law, Yo-Yo-Yo, yeah. yo, yo, <laughs> and his housekeeper, Cha-Cha-Cha. <laughs> Um. <laughs> so what's your name? Jay Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. This is the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. You understand what I'm saying to you? Power 101. Uh, let's go down to Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is near Ypsilanti. Uh, Todd McWilliams is the general manager of Adams Outdoor Advertising in uh, Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is where uh, Michigan is or Michigan State? Which what, what, What's there? What's... Todd? What, what... Oh, hold Todd's on there. there. What happened? Yeah, the Top Notch Jay Thomas Show. We're getting there. Perfectly produced. Yeah. Way to Move. go. Or, uh, Surely go in another room and pretend you're Todd McWilliams. All right. It's got to be weird because he's on hold, but I'll do it. <laughs> but then you're not going to be able to put me on. So 
What what happened? <laughs> we'll both be doing interviews on hold. I'll pretend to be Brandon. you. Right. Brandon. Brandon's working on it. He's working on it. Can you can you hear me, Todd? One second. How how in, well, yeah. one second. There you We're go. The You're air. good. You're good. Hello, Todd. Jay <laughs> Thomas here. How are you? Hey, Jay. I'm doing great. Woo! All right, we're going to uh, take Ann a Arbor. quick break. And uh, <laughs> has, yeah. Ann Arbor has what great Michigan University? Which which? Uh... Uh, Ann Arbor has the University of Michigan, and then right. Ipsy Ypsilanti has Eastern Michigan University. So we have two oh, within closer. ten miles of each other. Oh, ten, ten miles. miles. Yep. Now, now you guys, uh, what's the name of this playground uh, in Ypsilanti that where um, uh, the 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 mystery pooper is attacking? Uh, I, I don't know what I knew it like a couple weeks ago, but I've, um, I, I'm not sure. But one of my employees, uh, who lives in Ypsilanti, uh, yeah. came in and said, you know, everybody's talking about the Ipsy Pooper and he's pooping in slides and they can't find him. Yeah. It's been going on for six months. So I said, well, let's do something about it. And we ran those, uh, billboards that you saw and got a lot of press and national attention. And, uh, mm -hmm. we haven't caught the pooper yet. Um, but there's been no incidents since it took place. So Poop that's still on the loose, is what you're it's saying. It's called Prospect Park. Uh, Prospect Park, that's correct. That's correct. Yep, Prospect Park. Authorities think either he's dead or constipated. That's what they think. And <laughs> well, that's they told me that, they told me that they do Thank you for the have picked up his scent. They have told me that. They got his scent. Now, the, yeah. the billboards say what on them that you put up? Um, you know, give us, uh, do your civic duty, D-O-O-D-Y, uh, help us get the Yipsy Pooper. <laughs> the Yipsy um, Pooper. Yep, and then, um, we also had one, let's sketch the Pooper Trader. Ooh, uh, like so we, there were a lot that we didn't use that, um, you know, just went what to What are the, some of the ones the you rejected? Do you have some that you well, rejected? Your shit does stink and we'll find you. <laughs> that was that one. Yeah, that was one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Um, this isn't Good Morning Ann Arbor. You can say whatever you want to say. Yeah, go nuts, man. Not, yeah. Well, um, I mean, there were some. Yeah. I I don't recall all of them, but you know, we had a lot of fun. We laughed, and we said, "Okay, let's." Yeah. This is going to be public, so we have to, you know, do a little bit better than that. So we threw a lot on the ground, but it was more just having fun. So. Now, I'm sure the city officials are happy that you're looking for the guy and you spent money and put billboards up and everything else. So, um, a, a little bit. I guess they were taken back that we didn't talk to them first. I guess, uh, you know, this has been going on for six months. So, um, you know, I just thought, well, we could make a difference. And I just can't believe this person, if man or woman, is that smart and can outfox the police department. But, you know, they put up surveillance cameras and stuff like that. Um, they mm -hmm. did ask us to take them down because they said they had a person of interest, um, but nothing has happened since then. So I don't know what well, happened. Well, we that. we tried to have the city manager Ralph Lang. You know who that is? Yep, yep, I know Ralph. Yeah, yeah Ralph uh, said uh, he would. This is his statement: uh, We're not authorizing these billboards, and we don't need the help. <laughs> well. Yeah, I think they took that a little out of context because I've talked to Ralph, and I think um, yeah. the way it was reported really? was probably a little bit different um, yeah. in the newspaper. But because we've had a good relationship, I think. But, oh, okay, my you know, friend. And and, and yeah. hey, wait a minute now. He yeah. did say they were closing in. He he That's does make he that statement. They're closing in on a person of interest. Now we had a guy call a few hey. minutes ago that lives two minutes from that park. One second, Ara, and he thinks that the shitter is uh, or the pooper is actually doing it. You know, you see this on TV. They're killing the person and then bringing the body, you know, someplace else. They're killing them in one location. He thinks he may be uh, shitting in the woods. And then bringing the shit and <laughs> surreptitiously, like releasing it. Remember in um, like uh, these escape movies where they would have the, the the sand in their you know their their britches and they'd let the sand out in the oh, yeah. yard as they were digging. <laughs> he thinks that the guy's just dropping the uh, the shit, and that's why they can't catch him. You know what I mean? So he thinks he's a mastermind. Well, the other one that I just got was maybe the guy has a drone mm. that drops the shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's a big Game of Thrones fan and he's using a I, catapult of some sort. <laughs> yes. A I could be wrong, but I just don't think he's that intelligent. And I don't want to, you know, maybe he is. Maybe this is a, you know, something. Wait a minute. For a while. 
You got you got cops. You have cameras. You have night vision goggles. It's six months. What do you mean? He's the guy's a genius. He's a or it's Copperfield. Enemy one. It's Copperfield <laughs> filming a new special. Maybe it's David Blaine. He does weird mm -hmm. shit. Well, there is somebody who is claimed once we put up the Ipsy Pooper to be the Ipsy Pooper. So if you hashtag that, there is a guy who's claimed he is the Ipsy Pooper. I don't know if he is, but um, if you hashtag it, you will see this person. So maybe so that's the guy. You're for certain that it's human what, One poop. second. What will happen when, um, that's a good question, too. What will happen when they catch him? Do you know what, what what's the, what's the... Shit's going to hit the uh, fan. Is what's going to happen. Well, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. But what, um, what, what, what kind of time... deep this shit, happen? that's for sure. Yeah. All right, thank you, Christine. Well, uh, yeah, I, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No. Jay, I'm afraid what? this might be a copycat shitter. Where's the All right. Uh, well, I think there's a good uh, yeah. I don't know if hold on a second, term. Todd. Hold I'm on, hold sure. on one second. Hold on. Sure. Hold on one second. Todd and I are just like the the manager of the city. We don't need any help right now. Thanks. Uh, I've been I'm sorry, shitting Todd. in parks for years. <laughs> All right, get him off the microphone. Get him off the microphone. All right, back up. Todd, you've been trying to yeah. make a point. Please make it. Go ahead. Well, I believe that they'll throw the book at it, you know? I mean, that's what you would do in a case like this. And uh, who knows what's going to happen, you know? I don't know what's what going to happen. Book? What book? Are they, you know, what book? One of those kids. One of those. What were those books? When Uncle we, John's when bathroom kids? reader. It's ah, called yeah. Everybody <laughs> Poops. Everybody, everybody poops. poops. Yes. They're going to throw everybody poops at him, you know? <laughs> Well, obviously he doesn't have, well, I guess it's not obvious if he has toilet paper or not, because... They ought to give him keys, instead of keys to the city, keys to every port john in town. Yeah. So he doesn't light it on fire, it just sit, or she? We don't know what it is. Well, what I was thinking, here's what I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe if we create an app that um, shows you where the nearest toilet is, you know, yeah. so this person could have that app. And he'd always have a boat near him. You know, that could be something. It doesn't seem like this person is really concerned with those types of things. No, he's making a statement. No, I this know. Is, but... No, this is a turd terrorist. This is no different than Son of Sam or Zodiac. <laughs> yeah. he's, he yeah. wants to be caught at the end of the day, he or she. So wait, But it's a game to them. It's do a we, game. Do yes, we know, you know if yeah. it's human poop? Yes, yes, it has to be. It is human poop. Or we have the most talented animal on earth out there. <laughs> right. Some angry circus animal. Bosco. Come here, Bosco. Maybe you can that. find Come on, Bosco. out its pattern by seeing what it eats, and then you can find him that way. Oh. It's actually, here's the weird thing. It's a, it's a dog trainer who has a lisp, and instead of being able to say sit, he goes, shit, Bosco, shit, and the dog shit. <laughs> By the way, Jay. Uh, Hello. I, Hello, this is Mike Morgan. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, make sure the mic's working. <laughs> Ira has oh, some. Uh, yours was wait, off for that. Yours was off. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, I'm trying to get the. But, I'm but trying to get the. What is uh, he? Hold on a minute. Hillary, what do you think of that, Hillary? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Friggin' Hillary out? Yeah. Oh, By the way, Ira has some slogans for them if they'd like to okay. use these slogans. Todd, uh, yeah. Todd McWilliams, oh, yeah. by the way, yeah. general manager of Adams Outdoor Advertising in Ann Arbor, has put yeah. up billboards. If you live in the area, you've seen them around. Uh, uh, help us flush the pooper, the yipsy pooper. Uh, do your sort of <laughs> do deed. Report the pooper. Uh, help us catch the poop trader. Go ahead, Ira. What do you have for some flesh? You can okay. run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Get your shit together. There's yes. no way we're dropping the charges. <laughs> mm -hmm. Emphasis on dropping, but whatever. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Todd we'll McWilliams, thank you. And, um, okay. you know, as soon as they catch the guy, you know, uh, please contact Christina. We'll, we'd love to have you back on. Yep. And, yeah, I love that. And give you the... Give you does anybody um, actually, here? Hold on. Does anybody? No, no, really. You deserve congratulations mm -hmm. because, yeah, I think I think it's he's going to be caught because of what you guys have done. Does anybody yeah, like, here no. think this could be a woman? No, no. I think it could be. I lived in an all girls dorm, and we had a mystery pooper also. Really? What they? Really? Where did they poop? And what they do? In the bathroom, mm -hmm. but not in the toilet. Like where? Like, like on, the on the floor, in a stall, or right when you wow. walk in. God, you bros are so lazy. So disgusting. We used to shit in our showers in college. Shower? Yeah. It happened in the shower also. Really? Mm -hmm. 
Really? And, I, you know, yeah. we, we think that it was a girl. It was a, probably a very drunk. All right. How many, what are the odds girl? you give me? <laughs> Let's make a bet. If I take yeah. it's a woman, you got to give me some good odds here. Mm. Yeah. To, 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 I, I have a feeling this, <laughs> this might be a woman, uh, a mom that's just no. had enough. No. Oh, a mother at the <laughs> playground. A mother at the playground yeah. that's just had enough. Yeah. She snapped. No. It's her, it's her Michael Douglas falling down moment. She's like, I'm going to. Now, gonna... wait a minute. Could it be a child that, that they would never look for? Like a kid comes, pulls his pants down, he shits. Could it be a boy? Is, a little kid. Is it an girl, adult whatever. size? And if it is an adult, does he a child? Does he get charged as an adult for pooping in public like that? I don't know. Yeah, but you, you think the cameras would have picked yeah. him up because they have surveillance cameras. Well, if so. it's a short adult, it's definitely All a right. ghost. There's no it's other a ghost. Can you imagine this is our first contact with the with, with the, <laughs> the world of the not living, and it, they're shitting on slides at a park. We That's have it. a person on line six who wants to remain <laughs> nameless. I have no idea what that <laughs> is about. We're yeah, about to crack uh, this case wide open. Well, go ahead, Nameless. What is it? I'm the one who's pooping on the slide. Really? I hate slides. <laughs> Why? Slide Why? Why is that? Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, I shit on myself one time going down a slide, and everybody made fun of me. Yeah. And now I'm going to throw shit on that slide until the day I die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Thank you, Mystery Pooper. Take some uh, toilet Todd. paper with you. <laughs> <laughs> Todd apparently uh, it's an angry and uh, some childhood thing. You know. By the way, Todd, uh, have yeah. you contacted John Lieberman? Because I'll tell you why. You know, we had a bit of a shit gate go on over here at the Stern Channels, and yeah. John was key uh, in, you, in, in getting a uh, in getting a DNA test done on the sample, which helped us uh, uncover the, uh, the the mad shitter. But uh, yeah. you should contact, reach out to John Lieberman. I think they might. Yeah, they he's, might. Yeah. He's, we got to solve this. Yeah. You know, together, I think yeah. we can solve this. He loves shit and and crime, so he's in. <laughs> uh, let's go to line two. We have another apparent a confession coming in on line two. Yes, go ahead, sir. I'm the shitter, oh. and I'm going right now. Get him off! Get him off, Jane! Yes. Get him off! He's going to ruin the whole show. <laughs> yes, he is. Get him off. All right, I don't want to whip you. Uh, let's go to Tim of Seattle. Uh, Tim, uh, uh, what do you think they should do to this guy once he's finally caught, Tim? Well, I, I think they should just let the guy slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last line we'll use today. Thank you, Tim, very much. Todd McWilliams of the uh, uh, general manager of Adams Outdoor Advertising in Ann Arbor. Good Jay. luck catching the, the Ipsy Pooper. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving me a call. I'll let you know if uh, you find him. Yes, please do. Great Stay her. in touch, Todd. Great time. Great time. Good luck, man. It's a her. Watch, Jay. Watch right. your back. Hey, wait, Thank Todd, you. you ever put up those billboards showing an aborted baby? Those are my favorites. <laughs> no, we don't do that stuff. Right. Oh, okay. family here. Oh, damn. All right. I like that. Okay. I like that. All right. Okay. Thank you. If you don't believe in Jesus, this is what happens. To Todd, could there be a second there. shitter on the grassy knoll? Are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost him. Jay, <laughs> what is it, Ira? The what? shit slide was the worst stunt on Double yeah. Dare. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, by the way, let's talk about the NFL draft with our reporter from the NFL draft now, Shawnee from Boston. Shawnee, uh, give us your comments. Uh, that giant hey, football Shawnee. boy. That boy, he, he's with Cleveland. And uh, do you have taps, by the way, um, Brandon? Can yes. you play taps? Mm -hmm. Uh, does anybody remember mm -hmm. the other great Cleveland quarterbacks that have been um, Bernie drafted? Uh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Let's go just in the last six, seven years. Oh. Tim Couch. Oh. Tim Couch. Brady was Quinn. To be one of the greatest Brady athletes. Quinn. All of them. Yeah. It's a graveyard. That and old this guy, guy. Brandon Whedon. That other dude. Yes. That so This guy is now. going. Sadly, Johnny Mizell. Should have been picked up by a great team with a with an already pro quarterback in there, and this kid's going to be killed. He's going to get hammered. He's going to be killed. Shawnee, go ahead. Okay. Um. Yes. Thank you, Cap. Um. I was thinking, what? What? what get that there? thing off the fucking microphone. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Stop it. He needs Stop his, it. What was that? His, his, his carbs. His, his, Mr. No Carbs. Yeah. He's opening don't, his carbs. Yeah, don't open Mr. a package no from the carbs. air. You know what? I don't think it's funny. Don't laugh. 
<laughs> My God. It's Brandon laughing. Oh, really? I'm not. Well, stop it. No, yeah, it isn't. Brandon. <laughs> Ira, don't open shit on the air, no, stupid. No, I'm not. I'm not shit. <laughs> really? All right, I'm sorry, Shawnee. Give us your NFL hey, report. Hey, Shawnee, how's everything with you? <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Take the mic. All right, sh- All right, get rid of him. Take the microphone. All right. Get- All right, go ahead, Shawnee. Yeah, Are you doing a knock knock joke? Is that what you're doing? Were you doing a knock knock joke that we missed? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Knock 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 knock. Who's there? Who's there? Cha 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 Johnny. All right, go ahead, Johnny. Hold on one second. Hold on. Everybody, quiet down. It's time now for our. And I'm really interested in this. It's time now for the comments on the NFL draft by Shawnee of Boston. Shawnee, go ahead. Yes, Jay, before, before I get serious, se- se- serious, um, can, I, I, can, can, I, can I announce your, your uh, f- fantasy football team at the draft this year? Mm, sure, go ahead. Oh, nice. No, he wants to be the announcer while we do it. Yeah, you, yeah okay, you'll come with me. Just tell me what you think of the thing now, okay? <laughs> It's, All right, I, you know what? I, Don't you know? I, we got enough stupid non sequitur shit happening because he's the well. I don't give it really. Well, he's gone. He's done. He's done. Shawnee just hey, lost his biggest fan. Ira, yeah. learn to stutter and maybe you'll get a gig. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, please be quiet. I mean it. Shawnee, give us your yeah. comments on the NFL draft. Go ahead. It's not funny. Well. Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a lot long time Buffalo fan, and that that trade was absolutely sickening. I I vomited all all night. It was uh, wait a minute. Like we, it. we don't know. We don't know who who anybody. Uh, got. Nobody got. Who did Buffalo sorry. get that sickened you? What did what did what well, sickened you about it, Buffalo? It, 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 <laughs> It's what they gave up. They went from the not ninth overall pick to the fourth overall pick, and they gave up two. two the, uh, they gave up this year's first round. They swapped picks. Then ne- 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 next year they gave up a first round pick and a fourth round pick just to move five. Who spots. did they get? Who did they get? Sammy Watkins, a wide receiver from Clemson. I just Googled nothing's yeah. coming up for ah. Sammy Wawa Watkins. <laughs> yeah, no, you up, know though. what? Many people think he's one of the most exciting uh, players out there, Shawnee. So, yeah, you want an exciting player, you want a deep threat, you got to pay for it. They, they be, be, better be, be, be right because that's a bunch of bullshit giving up three, three, three pick picks for the guy. That, that's a lot for, for, right. for, for a wide, wide receiver. Right. What, what out, position? You Frank. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what position? All right. You know what? I mean it. Stop it. It's not. I don't want to hear all the fucking laughter and stuff. What position does Ha Ha Clinton Dix play? And say his name, please. Uh, he isn't he a cool, 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 back? Who? Who? Oh, Ha 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 Clinton 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 Dix. <laughs> All right. Nick, We're no right. different from bullies and videos that are And finally, really uh, Shawnee, um, uh, nobody cares about anybody else but Johnny Football. What do you think of Cleveland taking Johnny Football? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's our report from Shawnee of Boston. Hey, Thank you very Shawnee, much. have yeah. a good weekend. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Stay where you are. We'll tell you in a few moments how a terrorist lost his forearms. And we will have audio of video. Don't, well, if you have someplace else to go, you're not missing much. We'll see you later. Your name is Jay Thomas. Hey, Jay! Jay Thomas. Howard 101. Here we go. So, um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but they said, oh, we can never have a trial for a terrorist. The terrorists will blow up the city and all that. Well, th- we've had about four trials from terrorists in, in New York, and uh, nothing's happened, has it? No. Uh, Mustafa Kamel uh, Mostafa. It's actually the same first and last name. Mostafa Kamel Mostafa is an Iman on trial on a terrorism-related charge, and he's the guy who has one eye, uh, one foot, and no forearms and has these two hooks and stuff. Still and extremely strange, dangerous. 
Yes, well, they're oh. saying that he ran this terrorist camp in uh, Washington State, and they've interviewed some people. They said, well, did you go to the camp? They go, you the kids. They went, yeah, we went to the camp. <laughs> uh, did you learn how to build a bomb? This is this is in this is the big case. For yeah, the yeah. Camp. And the kids said, no, we played like volleyball. <laughs> And they and they weren't lying. They were just little kids that were Muslims, and um and I I really um they they say that he orchestrated the kidnapping of Americans and tourists in Yemen, and he created terrorist t- training camps in Bly, Oregon. Sounds like he was an events out. coordinator. Uh, he does for like the and, love but they boat. can't find anybody. Yeah. Who? Oh, they can't. They. have Nothing got blown up, and they said, "Well, did you guys, uh, you kids at this camp, did you learn how to be, you know, soldier, terrorist soldier?" Well, we played army. One of the kids said, "We played army." In between shuffleboard, we played army a couple times. So now the prosecutor is bearing down on him, and he says, "Would you tell us how you lost your forearms, not his arms, his forearms?" Yeah. He says, "I'm a civil engineer by trade." And I was involved in 1993 in testing liquid explosives for an engineering project in Pakistan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. When he was, um, when he realized that the bottle near him inside of the lab uh, was about to detonate, he picked up the bottle to throw it away. But before he could get rid of it, it blew both of his forearms off. This story's right up there with the guy explaining why there's a live gerbil up his ass at the emergency room. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm he said changed. that he was in a coma. He was hospitalized. <laughs> he returned to England and he was rehabilitated. <laughs> and he says there have been a lot of stories about how I was injured. And some people have even treated me as a hero. But to be honest, I, it was just a, a an experiment. That has gone bad. And they said, really? And he goes, yes, remember, I'm under oath. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Wow, huh? Now, a lot of I them mean, don't have a good oh, sense yeah. of humor like that. No, you know what's weird, though? I, You know, who the fuck? No, he's blind or mostly blind and has no arms and, and lost a foot or something. It's almost hard to see him come into court. You just go, this guy orchestrated all of these terrorist bombings in this from Bly, Oregon? It really is it really is difficult, you know, to to believe. And and it's like impossible. every every person that they have have caught as a terrorist, the FBI has helped build the bomb that they said on some website or whatever that they wanted to blow somebody. So the FBI said, "Well, we'll we they pretended they were terrorists too, and we'll help you blow something up." Right? They even go up so to the hotel to... room with them, and they're like, all right, yeah. p- call this number, and the van will blow up. And and then they call yeah. the number, and it's like the number of the FBI office, and, and then they just store They're in. like mentally ill. The people are like mentally ill. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, the shoe bomber is a Puerto Rican from Chicago that became a Muslim, and they sent him to, or maybe he was the underwear bomber, I don't know which one. But I always thought that was weird. Uh, let's go to Paxton of, of Oregon. Paxton, where is Bly B? L Y Oregon. Do you know that place? B L Y E Oregon. Yeah, it's, it's a couple hours from where I live, and I, and I've been through it many times. There's there's probably two hundred people that live there. It's in the middle of nowhere. Any Muslims? You ever see Muslims walking around town? Uh, no, they they're just dirty. So they're white people. They're dirty. They're really dirty. So. They're dirty white people. I see. Yeah. And they, they, their, their faces are dirty from, from what? What are they doing that get so dirty? Uh, no running water, things like that. There's no running water in the area. I see. All right. So, Paxton, what made you call us from, from near where the terrorist camp was? Well, I just want to see if you're going to get control of the studio. Of it, but I'm trying, Paxton, Paxton, and I appreciate it. I stupid. The fucking laughing. I hate it. I yeah, fucking I'm hate on your it. side, I, Jay. Everybody shut up. What's the matter, Paxton? Yeah, I mean, Did we ruin the shit slide interview for you? Did you not get enough information? I'm you know just what, waiting for a joke, a joke that, um, that lets everybody know that you're Jewish. I haven't heard one yet today. 
Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hey, look, I'm trying to help Shuley. I'm trying to help Shuley with a script, and I've given him some instructions, and he says, nah, I don't want to do that, (laughs) stuff like that. And and then I ask him, who are you? He he doesn't want to take any instructions, and I'm telling him to stop laughing, and then he... I told Jay, I'm like, if you know anything about scripts, people will be mailing them to you. They're not. That's right. So what am I going to listen to you for? Yeah. So I've tried everything with the guy. So nice try, Christina. I've tried... And Christina, when you would you say shit out of luck? I mean, really? S O L. That was so stupid to say I'm that. So, I know. I'm just going to shut up for the rest of the show. Uh-oh. No, Uh-oh. no. Uh-oh. Have just, you Ira said. write you some lines. Have Ira write you some lines. Ira, if you don't mind. Yes. Paxton, Can you thank write you me very some much. lines, Paxton. please? Hey, Ira, Ira, thank you. It's raining here. Ira, it's raining there. Spin it out, you prick! All right, stop it. Stop it. I don't know what he's upset about. By the way, how would you ever be able to light a fuse in those in Oregon? Doesn't it rain all the time? Well, not to mention. Oh, no, it snows. <laughs> ha, shut up. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Shoot, so, stop um, laughing. By the way, the teenager who had hidden in the wheel well uh, was in Hawaii, and his dad, the airline, I don't know what airline company it was, uh, flew the dad over. The dad hardly has ever been on an airplane and has never been to Hawaii. So the dad lands in Hawaii. Let him walk. And like, like, he wanted to stick around a few days. I swear to God, he didn't want to just pick the kid up and leave. So, but they made him and he puts the kid back in and they put him in the plane and the kid flew back to California and said, you know what? When I was in the wheel well, there was more leg room. <laughs> oh, Did you hear that one, Paxton? That would come out loud and clear ah. for you. Hey, Garrett, <laughs> there was more leg room in the real world. <laughs> We're not allowed to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. No, no. That's what? wrong. That's not true. That's not what Paxton was saying. That you said I'm you saying. hated the laughing. Yeah. No, the, it's over the top. It's like laugh a little bit and then stop. Do you think that you it, feel it, that way because, you know, you're over there and no. we're over here? I, no, because it's like those... Stu- stop it with the package. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Fucking stop it. It's like doing a show with your kids. <laughs> Jay. Stupid. What? It's terrible. Stop laughing. What is it? Jay. What? <laughs> what? What is it? Be scared. Okay, then tell me to be quiet. All right. I've never seen this Jay. Right. right. What? Move me. He's chewing his carb. <laughs> okay. All right. Stop it. Here we go. Um, by the way, for those of you that uh, know all about superfanworld.com, many of you may know from Georgia, the 40-year-old virgin, Jamie Foles. Jamie, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show at Howard 101. Uh, Jamie, the reason why you're here is you're a reject from Howard's show. And the programming department says we'd like to get all the rejects that Howard doesn't want over to your show. And I said, perfect. I, my whole life is made of rejection. Why shouldn't I have uh, the rejects? So, Jamie, uh, I'm sorry you didn't get on Howard's main show, but uh, you'll have to do here. Uh, why are you still a virgin at, at 40 years old? Why? Well, basically, I get asked out by a lot of girls, and uh, yeah. that, that may sound funny. Oh, and by the way, it is good to be here. I love reject shows. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> but uh, the main Hey, hey is... Jamie, don't, don't just laugh for <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you like that? All right, here we go, Jamie. Go ahead, Jamie. It's a, it's a stupid Friday. Go ahead. You know what it is? It's when you wear like a flowered shirt and you get to act silly on Friday. Ah, uh, go ahead, Jamie. Here we go. So women ask you out. Now let me ask you. I just read this psychological report. Do you have some sort of a anxiety uh, problem that causes you not to enjoy intimacy of any type, physical or maybe emotional? No. Well, I heard you talking about the categories a while ago. Uh, yeah. I will say I'm I'm a I'm above average guy. I'm six foot four. 
I have a size yeah. 17 shoe. What? That means your he penis is He does have a 10-inch dick. <laughs> I, well, I did. I have put on a little weight since I worked this night job, but I did that one time. So you can't see it? <laughs> now, why are you bragging that you're a uh, virgin? Are you just doing this to get on the radio because you sound fairly normal? Unless you're, you know, hugely, is your face burned or something? I mean, no. is there something wrong with you? Um, what? <laughs> Well, I just, I love Howard, and I've listened to him for years, and I thought there yeah. would be no better place to find the right girl than with a bunch of super fans. But, what, but what's going wrong with the girls you're meeting now? Like, you you seem like a somewhat normal guy. You meet a girl. What, how come you can't close the deal? What's the problem? Well, I can close the deal, and I have had a traumatic experience trying that before. But for the most part, most of the... Wait a minute. Right hold there, it. Stop right there. Hold on. Hold on. You can't throw something out like that without explaining the traumatic experience. What is it? Okay. I took a girl out one time about five years ago, and we went out on a date. Um, she got drunk all night, which, of course, there was nothing wrong with that. We got back to her house and everything, and... Uh, she whipped off her pants and panties all of one stroke, and she was turned away from me, and I saw this big, wide ass. Mm -hmm. That seemed okay, but she turned around, and she had an ass on the front. What? Mm -hmm. She had front butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop oh, yeah. it. What does this mean, front butt? What is that? How many times a day do you pump off, cowboy? <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Jamie, Jamie, why would you say she had two butts? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Was it uh, well, I thought it was stupid, too. Uh, I didn't know exactly what I was looking at. That is the only way I could describe it. And I didn't Her stomach that. was so fat or something, it looked like an ass? No. <laughs> you wasn't, I've seen, I've looked up front butt on the internet, and it shows pictures of people with these large bellies that hang down. That's yeah. not front butt. You would have to lift that up in order to see the true front Jesus butt. Jesus Christ, can you imagine well, lifting people up People of meat? Walmart have a whole front butt, a whole front butt section. Can you imagine, uh, excuse me, Miss, really? your, your belly now, button Jay. is sh taking a shit right now. <laughs> There was no genitalia visible at all. <laughs> how how much do you weigh? Do you weigh four hundred pounds? I'm three hundred pounds, six foot four, and size seventeen shoe. Seventeen. Well, three hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, three hundred. Now, are you? Um, do you do you Strictly work out at all, chicks? or is it just fat? Uh, just rolling around. Oh, no, no, it, it, I'm I'm not mid sized. It, it's like mid okay. I, I'm not muscular and I'm not fat either. I'm I'm just a large man. This poor guy's a virgin. It says a, a girl's front yeah. butt is called a vagina, sir, <laughs> and you're supposed yeah. to put your penis in it. Jamie, yeah. it says you got a ten inch penis. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I was real skinny, I did. Do you have a follow-up to that, Ira? Well, I got a 15-inch penis. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Gauntlet Bigger has been thrown yours. down. But he has it in a jar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, look, it says you love Lady Gaga and Elton John. Uh, are you oh, bisexual, right. yeah. Jamie? Uh, you bisexual? Jig is up. Not really. There's I'm nothing not, wrong with it. There's nothing really. wrong. Not well, really. No, no, I'm not. But I did say on the Stern fans, uh, they was asking me, or they actually said, you know, go out with another big girl. And you know, seeing a front butt like that, I would rather, I'd rather go out with a guy than I would another front yeah. butt. Let me tell you something, uh, Jamie. A year from now, you'll be the lead in Hairspray on Broadway, <laughs> and <laughs> and just well, embrace beautiful. it. You're you're into. Have dudes. you worn that uh, that cologne act? That, that the women are attracted to in all the commercials? Oh, Axe. yeah. I like Axe now. And I like Axe for women. Uh, that smells great. Not on me. Has it now, worked? Do the, the women come towards you as soon as you put that on? I have had that happen before, but usually... Well, you're in Georgia. Why don't you just pour Jack Daniels on your, on your body? They would probably come running for that. Well, for that girl, it would have worked because she drunk enough that she passed out in the theater. In the theater? Oh, yeah, that, uh, well, that now, you know what? I don't know what we can do for you. Uh, uh, you play a lot of World of Warcraft. Garrett Andrich was um, mm -hmm. hooked on that, doesn't do that anymore, and got to, what were you, like an 85th uh, top uh, dead priest? You, what were you? <laughs> you what would you get? 
Well, I was a level 60 dead. on Dead Priest, yes. Dead Priest. Yeah, what are you at now, Jamie? Uh, you just I'm hear horrible. all the vaginas getting wet out there as yeah. you brag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Jamie, what are you... What? I've got a level 90, and I'd love to get into Adrian Curry's guild, but I haven't been able to find out what her guild name is. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're I see about you live whatsoever. with your mother. Yes, I do. I, I, right now, I am until my truck's paid for. Yeah, I think I think you're more gay than heterosexual, and I just think you can't accept it. It's fine with us, and I think maybe you need to find a man and have the man suck you off. <laughs> and get, get things, yeah, see if and you get like things, it. And get things going. That you just need to get the plumbing going is all you need. And well, then if you like I'll, a man, you like. There's some really pretty men out there with yes, beautiful. Yes, there are gorgeous shaved, men out there. Well, easy, Ira. Shaved asses right now. I'll and so about just that. they have a front butt. Yeah. I'm, no, listen. Um, one, I'm not even sure I believe you. I think you're enjoying the notoriety and and all this stuff. And you got on the radio, but I. I I don't know if we can do anything. Well, you would you. be the first one. Like after that date, uh, I told my friends. I I told them what happened. I was like, she had huge butt cheeks on the front, and no one would believe me. But I yeah, believe it's just don't. because they, you know, they haven't seen one of someone that had one before. And I know. Okay, let, right, let's I've get off it. the girl. I lived in Pennsylvania. I saw hey, it. let's get off the girl. Jay. <laughs> Jamie, yeah. Jamie, you need to accept who you are. And the reason you haven't closed the deal is because you don't want to. That doesn't interest yeah, you, that's and that's it. fine. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And before that, I, like I said, I, I had uh, a lot of girls had asked me out and everything. But well, wait a minute. If you're it's having fun. trouble, you need to start drinking Mike's Hard Lemonade. That helps your penis. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you love Mike's Hard Lemonade. Okay, good. good. You know, the, the thing is, it's always these large women. And all right, all right, I never Jamie. Yes Jamie, oh. you're not into women. <laughs> and you're you're pretty large yourself, my friend. I mean, the only women you would be into, in oh, my yeah, estimation, well, are the ones you strangle by the roadside. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Garrett just pulled up a picture of a uh, front yeah. butt, Jay, and uh, yeah. I owe this I've man an apology. It. That is an ass yeah. on the front of a human being. Uh, that, the technical yeah. term oh. is bum in front. Oh, uh, so I've it's from Google. over the pond. I yes. was going to say, I think, that yeah, I'm about to say, I think that's in Germany. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, bum and frump. Oh my God, that what, is. Horrible. I mean, what is all right? It, the belly all right, I'm done with Jamie. Uh, oh God, that is horrible. Well, what it is is it's where the stomach kind of <laughs> splits up. You know, Jay. Um, what? If you don't want us to laugh anymore, yeah. keep yeah. booking guests like this. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jamie Foles, uh, Jamie, that's the you way. were great. <laughs> yeah. You were All wonderful. Right. Can you Jamie Foles, you. good luck Clap. to you. Uh, can see, uh, can keep going on superfanworld.com and, and listening to Jamie's bullshit. Right? How okay, sweet it is. How sweet right. it is. I, I'd like to thank all the, uh, Stern Facebook super fans that wrote in to get me on the show. And all right. uh, I'd be happy to they talk did. to you again someday. They did. Why didn't uh, want to now I know why Howard didn't about. want him, uh, uh Shuley. Uh, 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 very good. All right. Thank you, Jamie Foles. Uh, we'll have our audio or video stay where you are. Whiskey rule. Jay Thomas. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that, Jay? This, this, this is the Jay Thomas Show. Out 101. All right. <clears throat> uh, back in New York, uh, uh, Christina, Garrett, Shuley, our the weatherman. Jay. Um, Brandon, what? Jay, in, this, what? in the time this show has been on, Four right. slides have been shit on. Do All you know right. where your shit is? No, I don't. I know where my shit is. I'm going to come out in a bulk. A bulk. I'm not kidding you. It's too much laughing. Well, well it's funny. Gee, what do you want us to do? It is Friday. Well, it's funny, afternoon. but it's, it's like, really, it, I mean, laugh a little bit, but... Jesus. So Friday have afternoon, to... and I mean, really, we are... now we have to yeah. monitor our laughter. Well, I don't know about monitor, but it's starting to sound like you know a bad middle market fucking you know well, morning or afternoon show. Or what I'm, I don't know. What it is, Jay. This is who the... do you think causes the laughter back there, Ira? Who causes it? 
Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody causes it. Nobody. There isn't an instigator yeah, of the laughter. The only one that laughs <laughs> is Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still guy Britain. <laughs> That's the only one. I mean, you can't even hear what he's saying because you're laughing Shane, over Shane, because him. this is like the funny hour. <laughs> no, it isn't. I feel I mean, like we're getting compl- even even uh, 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 Furlot uh, texted me and said, it, you know, you've lost control of the studio. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's what it sounds like. I mean, Howard warned me about you, Shuley. He did, huh? Him. Take take over. Yeah. And I said, OK, I, I can control him. I can control him. Yeah, you I kind of feel like this is a little uh, a little directed towards me more than others here. It is a little uh, bit. I'm I, I expect that you to be kind of me back there. Oh. And and I'm 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 you know, sometimes kidding, but I'm not kidding. It's like it's just a little much. Uh you know, Garrett really is more of the controller during the week and you know, you come in there in the afternoon on Friday and I kind of expect more from you. Have you ever heard that before? Are you, are you talking to me? I'm sorry. I was. Yeah, oh, yeah. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, laughing I on the talking. inside. <laughs> I couldn't hear what well, you were no. saying. Have you ever heard that in your fucking life? Have you ever heard it? Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I almost laughed. <laughs> okay, you guys don't laugh. You'll be next. You'll be no, next on the hit stop list. Stop laughing. It's kind of oh, you know, Kim it, Jong Let's Thomas over here. No, you rock too much. <laughs> you rock too much. Now I may. Now you know I what, feed Christina, you to pee. Now it's just. Now it's just. I'm uncomfortable, so I can't help it. No, it's not even. You that. got the giggles or whatever the fuck. <laughs> this is a professional radio show. Yeah, real professional. You throw your your buddies under the bus. Who <laughs> would be about you? All right. You know what? Why don't, why don't you? Um, I don't know what. Why don't you? You want me to go get coffee get like Ira? You want me to go do that? Yeah, you know you could have the day off. Not a problem. Fun. Not a problem. Have a great really? day. Really? You got a something have hard a on today? Have a great day, everyone. Hey, I'm but not Jay. responsible <laughs> for. <laughs> wow. All right. Bye. Stop it. Okay. See you later. Bye, Shirley. Jesus. It's enough I'm for ready with that. For real. Bye, Shirley. I, I'm sure you are. Bullshit. He's not leaving for real. Really. Bob yeah. Bob hey, why don't you put some fucking audio <laughs> shit down and try and try and trick me again? Do that audio trick thing. Did he really leave? Fuck him. <laughs> Jay, thank God what? he's gone. Yes, there he is. <laughs> well, really. I mean, at, at some point, it's just... You know, let the fucking people talk. Let the jokes come out. And, you know, you know, I mean, if you watch these talk shows, uh, you know, uh, you know, Kimmel and all, they talk and people laugh and then the laughter dies and, and that's it. I mean, I wonder, you know, you respect Howard and respect these people and then, you know, respect me. That's what drives me crazy. She wanted to say, let me defend what everybody. What is it? You had the shit out. And yeah. then you had the sky, this, uh, yeah. this, uh, the, the, the virgin. Fall, the virgin. Big fat virgin. Yeah, couldn't you let it, yeah. I don't know. That's ha 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 You see how it feels? Ha 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 ha. See what I mean? I'm just saying that, that it's better. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. Jay. Now I am what? sitting in another, in the ha-ha chair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tell us a joke, Ira. Hope you don't get drafted by the NFL. No, I won't. <laughs> you like that one, Garrett? <laughs> I got it. I didn't know if I could laugh that Yeah, I'm not saying it. <laughs> oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> uh, John of Las Vegas. We'll have audio or video in a minute, I promise. Go ahead, John of Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Is if he was on Howard's show, he wouldn't yeah. do any of that shit. Oh well, of course. Well, that's true. I know that. I know. I know. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to like drum the obvious into my asshole. Okay, John. <laughs> Thank you. No, I love. Right. I love the show, but like you said, it just gets. Sometimes yeah. it gets too much. It does, and I'm with you. Thank you. I appreciate. And I loved it. it. I loved it when he wasn't there. Show ran great when he wasn't there. <laughs> well, he's not here now. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, get some audio going so you can fake me out. 
Uh, Andre of Vermont, go ahead. Line seven. Little shit. What's that? I said, Shirley's the shit. You act like a bitch. Yeah. Hey, is that nice? <laughs> yeah, you act like a bitch, dude. I mean, come on. This is a fucking show. I mean, really? You're not really that funny either, to be honest with you. Shirley's the fucking... You're talking to me. Oh, Shirley yeah, should but... still be here, and I shouldn't be here. Yeah, basically. basically. Oh, okay. Well, fuck. dude. Hey, you know what? I, why don't you go where Shuli is? Get rid of him. Get rid you know, of him. I wish... Shut up. I wish nothing. Let's go to Ken of Washington. Hello, Ken. I'm not going to take any more phone calls, I can tell you that. Go ahead, Ken. Go ahead. Do it today, Jay. Line six. I'm all right. Yeah, I was kind of, I, I'm was. i kind of wondering. You know, you need to kind of get that stick out, buddy, because it sounds like you're feeling like uh, you're... Uh, being beat up on or something. But, you know, let them four folks laugh. They were having a good time, and you're, you're wrecking the show, buddy. All right, goodbye. <laughs> All right, let's go to Carol of Pennsylvania. Yes, Carol, go ahead. Go ahead, Carol. What? Thomas. <laughs> yeah? I'd like you to know that Shuley is the only reason I listen to your shit show on Friday. Really? Well, hey, hey, listen. Um, <laughs> hey, front it is a butt. Comedy have a nice show, weekend. Isn't it? Yeah. Bag. Yeah. F- front butt. But you have a big ah. fucking front butt. Okay. Well, you you got a front face butt, ass wipe. Really? Really? Yeah, How would you really? like me to put my front penis into your front butt? Huh? I don't think you have. See, I don't need Shuli, Garrett. Dick. I don't need Shuli to be funny. I got the line. Oh, yeah. You're so funny. Let's hear about <laughs> Cheers. Let's hear about uh, what's that stupid one? You were the football coach. You only mentioned eight million times a week. Uh, <laughs> you live in the past much? Yeah. Is Shuley texting you stuff to say right now? <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah. This is okay. my own front butt mind saying it. All right. All right. All right. Hey, listen. I think I think you're late for rehab, so I'll talk to you later. No, well, actually, I'm a rehab counselor. Thank you for. Bringing I bet it you up. are. Isn't that amazing? How I know that shit. All right, goodbye. Get rid of goodbye. her too. Get rid of all of them. Shut up. Hey, let's call. What? Let's call Shirley to make up. Yeah. No. Uh, let's go to Maine. Mike of Maine. Go hey, ahead. Hey, Mike. Mike. How you doing, Mike? Mike Amain, go at line four, please. Line, that's, that's somebody else. Line Wake up, four. Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, Hi, go ahead. Hey, hey, Jay, uh, by the way, listening to these fuck faces call, you're really pissing me off because you actually have a kick to that show. And some of these fucking idiots think that Howard Show, they don't quite get how Howard Show works either. So, um, Shuli is your uh, sidekick or whatever you want to call him. And I love Shuli as much as anybody. But Well, didn't Shuli sound show. like he was pissed off or overdoing it a little bit? I did. I felt the tension there. Attention. Well, it's hard not to laugh on this and when Ira starts typing in in the comments, and it's—I mean, it's really. So hard you're saying that Ira's causing the laugh? La- okay, Ira, get out. Okay, James. Bye. Get out. Goodbye. Well, okay, thank go. you, Mike, very much. I was trying to find out who was causing it. Dropping like flies. Because I'm the one you're supposed to be laughing at out there. We're not supposed to be laughing in here. So I guess I'm not doing my job. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day, Jay. Good to hear from you. All right. Sal of Pittsburgh, go ahead, and then we'll go to audio and video. Go ahead, Sal. Jay, first time, long time. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, um, I have an extra tampon for that front bun of yours if you need to put it in there. All right, get rid of him. Get rid of him. He's done. <laughs> put the tampon in my front butt. <laughs> Sheldon. Go in butts? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Sheldon of Canada. I have Go one ahead. if you want to test it. <laughs> now you're making me laugh and I'm Hello. pissing myself off. Yes, Sheldon. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Sheldon. Yes. Hello? Yes, Sheldon. Go ahead. You know what I love? The reason why he, the laughter doesn't bother him, he's deaf. Uh, go ahead, Sheldon. No, I'm not deaf. I just can't hear you on this phone. What I wanted to say was I hear you yes. get a lot of flack because you got some yeah. flack from upstairs and people can't understand. Yeah. Not professional what's going on. You're right. Thank you very much, Sheldon. I appreciate it. Sheldon knows I'm not professional. All right, let's do some audio and video. I think we're ready to play on the set, please. The 
bubble area. All right, here we go. Audio video. We'll see. Yeah, we're rolling. And Mark. We'll see. It's funny now. It's funny like I'm a clown and a new An exclusive feature only on the Jay Thomas Show. Audio video. All right. Now, uh, back in the studio, I want you to watch this video. It's two people at... um, uh, at a TV station. And what town is the TV station in? Do we know where the, where the little rabbits were, uh, Brandon? Do we know where it was? Um, uh, Kansas. Somewhere in Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. So, uh, Christina, can you see a, a, a video there? You see the screen and everything else? So, they, uh, there's the morning show, or whatever. They bring in the little bunny rabbits. And in the middle of the thing, the rabbits start screwing okay here we go let's listen to this okay that's it put the dance. you, you got to stop that more <laughs> all right let's go to this we will announce the third rabbit's name in nine months <laughs> have a all terrific right. day and a great easter that was a first <laughs> was it like that yeah what good one that was a good one see the rabbits mm-hmm. they, they're on the tv and the rabbits started fucking in front of the guy ew that's what happened uh, let's go now to something that's happening because it's graduation time, uh, along with the NFL draft. Go ahead, Brandon. Let's run that. After a cheating scandal in the winter, Corona Del Mar High School is making headlines once again for all the wrong reasons, this time for holding an annual NFL-style prom draft. They just pick, like, numbers randomly to see, like, who gets first pick and last pick and all in between. Oh, that's awful. And then they pick who they want to take to the dance. This year, students oh, say God. a group of about 40 boys, mostly seniors, gathered at a clubhouse dressed in sports coats. In order to be there, they had to purchase draft tickets. A Twitter account created to highlight the draft showed the participants' chairs lined up. The tweet and the account have since been pulled down. Some parents are shaking their heads. If they treat women this way at this age, what will they do then when they're of legal age? They're drafting them that's not exactly respectful. Students at the top-ranking school, however, seem to think the draft is a harmless tradition. It's pretty just like an organized way of doing it. I don't think it's anything like that. (laughs) It's supposed to be like a funny thing that the guys are doing and I don't think that the girls are really being affected by it. I know that no one set out to like objectify a woman in the first place and everyone was just trying to be funny and there's this high school and I think this kind of thing is blown out of proportion a lot. The district denied our request for an interview and the principal here is not talking but she did send out an email to parents of both juniors and seniors urging parents to talk to their kids about the consequences of their actions. In that email principal Kathy Scott writes I am sure the intention of the draft is not to be harmful, but it may be. It is not okay for any student to be objectified or judged in any way. This mom to two boys is glad the school administration has finally addressed the draft, which students say has been around for more than a decade. If the school is going to take a moral standing in the upbringing of our kids, I don't think that's, they're, they're not doing their job. The prom is set for June 7th. In Corona Del Mar, Christine Lazar, CBS 2 News. So, so we would all buy a ticket, and then we would have you in the draft, Christina. And I but, assume and it would be just like the drafts that you're a part of here. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. I would come up to you in the school and say, "Would you like to go to the prom with me?" And nobody else could ask you because I got the draft ticket. I don't. That's okay. Now, the sad thing is, is you know, no fat, ugly girls are probably in the draft. Right. All the unless, girls that we're talking in Garrett, that piece are probably picked for the draft, so they don't care. Unless Garrett, it's a guy that needs a good lineman. <laughs> um, how many rounds? I mean, once you get to the seventh round, I'm sure there's. Wow, well, you're pretty. It's gotta be pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be pretty bad. Uh, so, but Christina, you would probably go pretty high. You think You're so? You're going to high rounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would not like that. I, no, I, I think probably in real life you wouldn't be that fun to be with, but I think in our fantasies we think you would be. Yeah, you're probably right. That's why you're a good fantasy player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of guys out there playing fantasy. You're right, Jay. We may never get, we may never get this show back. We may never be able to turn the ship around. I don't know. You kind of stuck the fun out. No, I didn't suck the a fun out. Bit. I, I mean, took a control. Li- a little no, bit. No, no, I took... You know what? This is something you don't like. Every now and again, you take control. I feel fine now. I feel great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandon, are you okay? We got the audio and video going. It's all right. right. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're doing great. I mean, when you Brandon say something funny and I start laughing, job, I don't get mad Jay. at me. No, no. I'm not getting mad, and, okay. and don't overreact. Don't overreact. I'm not. I think I'm just we making got, sure. I think we got the culprit out of the room, all right? Okay. Just need to relax a little bit. Uh, by the way, when you need laughter, you go to Family Feud. <laughs> all right. Okay. 182 points. <gasps> How many points do you need, Anna? I need 18. That's all you need. That's all 18. I need. What chance do you have of dating a girl who's a 10? Four. Name a kind of place where people keep checking their watch. At the airport. Try again. Uh, restaurant. Name a noisy insect. It's fast. Name something a person's belly does. Growls. Try again. Uh, throws up. Fill in a blank. A married couple might be deeply in what? Love. Try again. Marriage. Oh, God. She got all of those. Wait a minute. Number one answer. Wait a minute. She got all of those zero. She would not be welcome to any family event ever after this. All zeros, what? not even one point. She failed the whole family. She only had 17 points to get, and she what failed the them questions? miserably. What was the questions again? Wait a minute. Run it back. Yeah, run it back. I uh, I thought she... I told you I'd do it for Anna. What is it? What is it? How many points do you what need, Anna? I need 18. That's all you need. That's all I need. What chance do you have of dating a girl who's a 10? Stop it right there. Stop it right there. Stop it. 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 What chance do you have of dating a girl who's a 10? Mm-hmm. And the chance would be a percentage? What would you over the The first be? person said five, five. It's like five out of 10, you know, what out of 10 points or whatever that you have a chance to do. So you'd have a chance four means? out of 10. I didn't get that question either. That was confusing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they ask this all the time. Misleading. And what I've noticed in my Advid family feud watching is that you're always wanna, you always want to take it right down the middle for questions like that. So the first person so sh- said five. So she should have said five. Yeah, and the right. first person did say five, and they got 31 points. But if I heard that question and I thought take it down the middle, I would say 50. You too. Fifty percent. No, I chance. think he says no, out no, of ten. No, one to ten. I think out he of said 10. out of ten. I don't think he did. What are your he odds said. out of ten? So it would be odds like uh, I would say sense. two. I would say a chance of you going out with a ten would be two. She said four. But he only said ten once, and the girl was a ten. Yeah, he I don't didn't think he say said what that. are your odds out of ten again, that you date a ten? No. What What are your odds out of 10? Okay, go ahead. Play it again. Play it again. What chances do you have of dating a girl who is a 10? That's what it is. Who's a 10? Right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. How many points do you need, Anna? I need 18. That's all you need. That's all 18. I need. What chance do you have of dating a girl who's a 10? That's all he asked. What chance do you have of dating a what, girl How do you answer ten? that? Exactly. Okay, so is that's... It, all right, it's a, it's a shitty question, but... Still, she only had 18 points to get, and she did. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's move no on. Here we go. <laughs> That's Here we probably go. the number one. That's a good one. Okay. Four. Name a kind of place where people keep checking their watch. Stop. The right there. Stop right there. Hold up. At the airport. Why didn't that get it? Because that was the first person's answer. The dude yeah. in her family got it. Oh, so she you guessed that, that, and then it went, uh, uh, uh. Right. Oh, that's because somebody else did. Mm. So the next one was she said at a restaurant. Yeah, try again. Uh, restaurant. Name a noisy insect. What's a noisy? A gnat? Cricket. A fly. I re- okay, what did she say? I what did she say? She said cricket and then passed. You better spray that passed. mic with something. Name she something a person's completely. belly does. Front butt? It growls. Yeah, that's a good answer. Well, that she was said, the, the first person. Oh, somebody else. Said, and she said it throws up? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what's the other answer? Again. Grumble, maybe? Um, no. Get it for that. She, we couldn't have got the fucking 18 points either. That's why I wanted to I feel it. like I would have gotten it at the last one, though, because I, the well, la- play the last one. Of course one. you do. You're, well, you're I, yeah, I'm a Monday morning the quarterback. School. I know. I'm a Monday morning yeah. quarterback. But listen yeah, to the went last to the one. the school. Okay, here we go. Fill in a blank. A married couple might be deeply in what? Love. I, my first guess would say debt. debt I would yeah. say debt before love any day of the week, and that's how I would have won. That the prize. is sick. 
That is sick that you would say debt. <laughs> Coming from the band that calls a wedding a funeral. Every time. Oh, yeah, thank you well, very much. Well, that's true. I have a thing, a problem. But, um, yes, my I've also first, called funerals yeah, this is a my marriage. First thing. <laughs> would be debt. Okay, go ahead. Let me hear it. Marriage. And these are zeros. Wow. Love was the number one answer. Wow. What do you, do you even I'm if you win? Okay. Yeah. What, it's 20 grand. He five, has to come back. Wow. Five uh, family members. You know, so that's like 10 grand no, after you taxes come back. that you split. So you're getting two grand. But oh, you come, come on, back. Gary. You, don't, you, you just again. say 20 grand, and that's what you think you win. I mean, that's. You know, but not, you know, you're, you're breaking really it down out? now. Yeah, I think no, no, no. You win twenty thousand dollars for the grand prize, but then don't you take away some money for the points that you win throughout the game? Also, no, only no? the ones if you don't make the. Fun. You know, I'm not really a student of uh, a family feud, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so one night, uh, two guys are going to rob a grandmother. Here we go. <laughs> oh, they sure mess with the wrong woman. She tells local oh, yeah. four she hopes her story will make criminals think twice. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have you. Glad to be. Her siblings jokingly call her Rambo, but Paris Ainsworth could have easily been killed. Her attacker shot her four times. Jesus. But she had eight bullets for them. If I wouldn't have had my gun, I would be dead today. Late Saturday night, she arrived home after working a double shift. She saw two men moving closer. Before she got out of the car, she put her 45 caliber handgun in her pocket. He said, don't pull it, and he shot immediately. She was hit three times in the side and once in the hand. It was not her shooting hand. I said, you <laughs> pull it out and start shooting. One, wow. he was right in the middle of the street. The other one was right here on the side. Paris waited on a neighbor's porch until EMS arrived. I kept applying pressure to my side of my where the blood was coming from. A police source says the two men were arrested after showing up wounded at Sinai Grace Hospital, the same place where Paris was being treated. I'm extremely proud of her because she was able to return fire back. She had something to protect us. <laughs> if she don't, she would be dead. She has a faint scar, but a strong memory of a mugger hitting her with a gun 10 years ago. Two years ago, she got a concealed weapons permit. This is ludicrous, the way that they are just robbing and trying to take stuff from people and killing people. She praises Detroit police for the help they gave that night, but she's convinced that law-abiding citizens need to be ready to protect themselves. Well, could he have shot you because he thought you were going to shoot him? No, he didn't <laughs> shoot me because he felt as though I was going to shoot him. He didn't care. He just shot. He didn't look like, oh my God, I shouldn't have. He just had like the devil in him. Paris is 51. Say she has hi. four grandsons and works in health care. She has two handguns and trains regularly. I thank God that I'm here and my family. It was it was horrible. I never want to see anything like that again. Wow. We have no details yet on the criminal case, but Paris Ainsworth tells me she is eager to testify. One of her big sisters tells me I used to bully her. No, I'm not going to mess with her anymore. In Detroit, I'm Roger Weber. <laughs> She's pretty tough. Roger, do we know where the men were wounded? Well, we're a little sketchy on that. Uh, we know from the police source that one of them was hit in the leg. Uh, not sure about the other one, but we are told that both of them were arrested in the hospital, where at least one of them was getting medical treatment. All right, our Roger Weber reporting for us live. How about the two assholes go to the hospital where you're immediately arrested yeah. or questioned when you have a gunshot wound? So they shoot her three times. They must have used a small caliber gun and like a 22 or a 25 or something. And then she whips out her gun and blasts both of them. Wow. And she's a it's almost it's almost fun to think about living in uh Detroit. You know? It's like you know, we watch cowboy movies and shit, you know, and you think that'd be fun, wouldn't it, to live where you get yeah, fuck you, I'm gonna draw my gun on you. <laughs> I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. All right. Uh by the way, uh, there are a lot of bad people out there who've done evil things and, and, and were they do they have wisdom? Uh, our next guest uh, selected wisdom from murderers, stock swindlers, and, and Lance Armstrong. Uh, we'll be right back. So what's your name? Jay Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. This is the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. You understand what I'm saying to you? Power 101. Uh, Zach Bissonette uh, on Twitter. 
Uh, the book is Good Advice from Bad People, uh, Selected Wisdom from Murderers, Stock Swindlers, and Lance Armstrong. Uh, Zach, am I saying it right? Is it Bissonnette or is it Bissonnet? Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Perfectly. Great. Uh, so you uh, sit down and you decide that there are some evil uh, uh, asshole people out there. Uh, Donald Trump is an evil. And not person. all of them He's in Detroit. Trump. <laughs> no, that's true. And, and 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 Trump is an asshole. Joel Osteen and his wife are horrible, evil assholes. Um, well, they are. They're terrible people. And, I totally agree um, with you. And they're liars. And they're, he pretends it's Jesus and all that. He keeps his eyes closed, which which says he's lying. If you read anything about uh, psych- Tiger you Woods, good, is not is- a very nice guy. Um, so so you write a book, and I mean, I, I know it's uh, a joke, but. Um, uh, so, so what, what would, um, what would we get out of a guy named Rod, you know, or like Rod, uh, uh, Belajevich, who's now, whatever his name was, is now in jail, was the governor of, of, uh, He is such a loser, I will not even bother correcting you on the pronunciation of his name, because it doesn't matter. Um, Blagovich? How do you know Blagojevich? 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 Blagojevich, but it's fine, it doesn't yeah. matter. Blagojevich. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, no, so the, the idea of the book was, basically, I sort of had this realization, starting when, when Lance Armstrong was making his pathetic apology comeback tour with Oprah doing, oh, you know, I have sin shtick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had this kind of realization that it's just gotten way too easy to become an inspirational icon in America. And one after another, these people are not vetted. We hold them up and we talk about how wonderful and inspiring and moral and ethical and courageous they are. And then it turns out one after another that they are total frauds. And so that was really, the idea was to look at the advice that they gave when they were pillars of the community and then sort of track their sort of fall into the shitter um, as they failed to follow their own advice. Uh, my wife had just recovered from cancer and somebody gave her Lance Armstrong's book. Now, she was a cancer survivor or whatever. She held the book up. She says, what a bunch of shit and threw it in the trash can. And, did and, you know, and, I, and she, your, your wife, could see that before his fall. She said, this guy's so incredibly full of shit and just, you know, got lucky. He beat, like, five different cancers. I mean, what he did was ridiculous. But she goes, first of all, he's not even human. I mean, nobody, one half of one thousandth of a percent uh, survive what he well, assuming, uh, assuming, by the way, that he was telling the truth about what his diagnoses and prognoses had been, you know, which... Really? Given, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but given that this is a man who has lied about every single detail of his life for his entire life... You think he life, had his own testicles sh- uh, cut off and he just... No, 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 I, 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 I th- no, I mean, I think, you know, you know I think... I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think, you know, that, that do I think that he probably, you know, made his comeback sound more extraordinary than it was? I mean, look, Lance Armstrong was a hero because he had a prognosis that did allow him to come back from cancer. And my question, I guess, would be, you know, let's say that, that, that his diagnosis had been worse. Like, you know, it, that, that he had worse. been able to come back. Wait a minute. Brain cancer, testicular cancer. What else did he have, Garrett? He had like five cancers. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm just, uh, he was able to come back with that worse. because of because of medical tr- treatment. You know, and God bless him. You know, but that you know, if he hadn't been able to come back because it had been more aggressive, would that make him any less of a hero? I mean, that seems a little cruel. Here's what's so odd. Um, I've always said this, and in Europe, you know, the Tour de France is huge, and Lance Armstrong is now. Can anybody name Christina? Name the American leader in uh, professional <laughs> bicycling right now. Uh, Lance Armstrong. <laughs> no, well, name, name another, another Ira. Name another famous uh, professional bicycler. Ira. Bicycle. Um, yes. I don't know who who good bicycle. You have a friend that rides a bicycle? I ride a bicycle. Garrett Andrich. Garrett Andrich. That's right. Let's bring Garrett Andrich to the microphone. We happen to have him in the studio. <laughs> Garrett, uh, can you name another bicycler? No, no, no one gives a shit oh, about bicycling. Lamond, Lamond, that guy, Lamond, Lamond. Yeah, Greg Lamond, Lamond, Greg Lamond. Right. Yeah, and I then, guess. Um, I don't know. 
oh, the other guy, that Landis, Floyd Landis, didn't he get Thank caught you. cheating too? Right, the only no, guys Zach, we know are the on ones some who level, Zach, threatened to kill. If, if, if Armstrong hadn't cheated, he would have just been a mid-level racer. Now he wins, and he says everybody else was doing it, which I believe. So is it okay? I mean, I think it's okay that he cheated. That's the other problem. So in your book, do you say, look, cheat, and you win? Is that is that part of... of you know, I don't. I tried to just collect the advice and not not sort of sort of draw too much from it. But one of the things I've gotten some emails about this that people noticed is that in most cases, people paid very very low prices for being total frauds. You know, Jim Baker, who was the you know the televangelist asshole in the eighties with with Tammy. Faye. I was in Charlotte. I was a DJ in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, that's what his hometown. Yeah, the PTL club, and yeah. my close friend who was also on the air with me, a guy named Larry Sprinkle, used to do a bit called the Pass the Loot Club, the PTL <laughs> club, Pass the Loot, and he did bits and everything else, and Jim sued the radio station and all that, and they were, uh, they were, they had amusement parks and everything else, yeah. and you know, he's still preaching. Did you know he that? He has his own theater in Branson, Missouri, and I've watched, yes, he I does. actually ran into him at the airport, weirdly. Um, but you know he's still preaching. He still does the pass the hat collection thing. He still does the kind of forcing of the tear on television thing, and he's still living the high life. He has tens of millions of dollars in federal tax liens, but he has everything in his wife's name, and and life goes on. And he he's pretty typical in the sense that you know every once in a while one of these guys you know will really screw up to the point that there's no coming back. You know, but Alex Rodriguez still has hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, you know, Al Dunlap, who was the CEO of Sunbeam and was a total criminal and was banned from being an officer director of a public company for life. Um, he retired with, with tens of millions of dollars to Florida. So, so in general, um, yeah, crime pays. I mean, there's now, a, what about know. Sandusky? Sandusky wrote a book, Jerry Sandusky, who's in jail forever. Touched. What? What did you? What? What advice did he give? Do you remember? Yeah. So the this advice is people. I paid one hundred and fifty dollars to buy that book on eBay because it's long out of print and very rare. But no, in two thousand one, at the height of his fame, Jerry Sandusky wrote a, a sort of self help inspirational memoir that was called "Touched: The Jerry Sandusky Story." And in it, he said the most important thing that you can do in your life is find a way to reach out and touch other people. I sort of got. I mean, that's a direct quote. He, wow. he actually. He, Actually said that. Um, oh wow! Wow! So. Think Nobody he was jer- stopped jer- him. Nobody you, said maybe you, you should say uh, that. Think he was jerking off when he said that. I think he was always jerking off when he said anything. <laughs> now the guy who fired Steve Jobs, who was that? Uh, the- yes, this was John Scully, who was the CEO of Apple and a major moron. And but was it was it Jobs hard to work around? Wasn't he? Um, you know, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, totally. But here's the thing. Here's why I put John Scully in the charlatan, mountebank, loser category. Is that he, he wrote a book called uh, when he was CEO of Apple called Odyssey, Pepsi to Apple: A Journey of Adventure, Ideas, and the Future. And he actually used Apple's money to purchase a copy of his own book for every employee, so that they could learn from his brilliant wisdom. And he said, "You mean if book, I wrote a book, I would have." Bought all the books, and, and I would have given them out as Christmas presents. My own book. But, but you would have spent your wow. own money. You wouldn't have taken, you know, if you. Oh, done that. yeah. He, oh. he used he used Apple's money to do this. Um, and he wrote in the book. He said, "I encourage and elicit contrarian views and contrast. We want people to be able to see more than they ordinarily might." I find the process of reaching a decision more valuable than the results. It's important to place tension between points of view to extract the best from people. This sense stimulates discussion. And then he had a chapter in his book that was about how to manage creative people. So, yes, Steve Jobs was very creative and difficult to work with, but John Scully was out there touting himself as the expert on how to work with creative people. And then he fired Steve Jobs in a showdown. Then, then, then Scully was fired a few years later because the company went into the shitter. And then Steve Jobs was brought back to serve as CEO. And Scully is probably worth $400 million, right? Yeah, so Scully, I'm sure, did just fine. And he's on, he's on Bloomberg once in a while pontificating, and no one cares. Um, uh, you also, uh, it, Joel Osteen's wife was charged with assault after a stewardess spilled water on her. She went uh, berserk. 
Um, yeah. and, yes. and this guy packs, packs them in. Uh, but you know, if you try and, I've never met anybody that says they sent money to a televangelist, but they really are rich. Um, and yeah, well, so, I think it's primarily people who don't leave the house and then, you know, die one day and are found under a flattened kitty in a pile of clutter. I think that's. You're, a, you're kind of a sarcastic, kind of a negative kind of person, Zach. Am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not oh, good. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that's okay. Uh, you're writing a book about terrible people, and you're, you're, exactly. you're well qualified. Um, good advice for bad people, selected wisdom from murderers, stock swindlers, and Lance Armstrong. O.J. Simpson is the murderer you picked? Uh, there's a handful of murderers in there, but O.J. Simpson is certainly the most prominent, although, to be fair, we should say that he was, in fact, acquitted by a jury of his peers. Acquitted of that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the day you take complete responsibility for yourself, said O.J. Simpson, the day you stop making any excuse, that's the day you start to get to the top. Yeah. I, I want that oh, to be on a nice. banner in every middle school classroom. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, also, let me see, uh, the guy that fired Steve, Steve Jobs, uh, Tiger Woods, uh, people stopped liking him because he did something we all would like to do, which is fuck like 35 women. Um, and by the way, I mean this. His wife didn't care. Um, there are people in the, in the, in the pro golf scene that I know, and she was gorgeous and all that. But do you remember when all that shit happened? It came as a complete shock to her that he had all these mistresses. Do you that, remember? That, that seemed a little she, implausible to me, too, that he was, that she was so shocked. I mean, she was either the was, stupidest woman in America, or she was. No, lying. she. I mean, she didn't care. No she one knew. She, I, I never heard once anyone before this say Tiger was sleeping around. Or, you know, I didn't hear that's anything true. about it. But I think she. You cared. know, when she I first heard it. Out. When I first heard it, there was a pro up from San Diego, and we were playing at my club, and the pro turns to my buddy who was a pro uh, caddy and says, "Hey, man, there's a really big mouth." broad from san diego that's going to fuck up tiger woods um, and i and i of course i got a radio show and i went really what's that he goes well look i don't want you to say it but he goes she's telling people that she's been fucking him for years and he's been giving her all kinds of money and he promised to marry her and, and that was the first one that that came out and and now remember we only knew about the ones in the united states he was a worldwide success. There had to be another 20 or 30 women out right. there. And, you know, before a few years before his fall, Tiger Woods' father had written not one but two parenting books on how to raise great kids. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and it sort of speaks to the sort of credulity of the public. But what did we know about Tiger Woods? We knew that he was really good at golf. So why the hell do we need two books on his father about how to raise a person of good character? We never knew anything about Tiger Woods' character other than that he told us he was a wonderful person. True. Christina, if your dad put you in the garage and gave you a little golf club and made you hit a thousand balls a day, what would have been your, you're an only child and so is Tiger, what would have been your reaction to your dad, and this is what his daddy did, put him in the fucking garage and he had to hit the balls? Yeah, I would have would never, have I would have never stood for that. That would I wouldn't have never have happened. Uh-uh, wouldn't and, have you happened know, I'm, I'm an only child, so usually I got You'd my way. You'd only be a millionaire by now. <laughs> yeah, but it has to be golf. Well, Ooh. You know, yo yo ma. Is. If they made you me know do, the, you know, like um, turns, what? like if I was to be like a professional, like, to do no, like to be a dancer or something like that, I think it would a be. Oh, you would do. Yeah, very, if they very made me do those Christina. in the garage, oh, I would probably okay. stand for it because then I'd have you know a, a career oh. in something other. But a ballerina is like top salary is ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah, but I mean, my body would be incredible by now. <laughs> so you wish your parents had forced you to be a ballerina. Yeah, I mean, and every single time I watch the Olympics, I'm like, why couldn't you push me into something? Why couldn't you? be... Hey, Zach, I guess we're wrong. That's good parenting. That's good parenting. All right, I take it all back. Take Tiger Woods yeah. out of the book and buy his father's book. Well, you know, Yo Yo Ma, <laughs> the great uh, whatever he is, Chalice. violinist or whatever. Chalice. He Whatever. says that if his parents had not <laughs> forced him to take Stop music left. lessons, and everybody I know that plays the piano says the same thing. My parents forced me. Is there anyone out there that plays a musical instrument uh -huh. that wasn't completely forced by their parents? Rock and roll if, players. 
Yeah, that's right. Apparently they know four cor- chords. Um, <laughs> good advice for that's bad true. people. Selected wisdom. What other murderers did you pick for your book? Oh, what other God, murderers? that's a good question. Do you know, off the top, there, there's like four others. Most of them are pretty obscure. And to be honest with you, this is embarrassing. I am blanking. Oh, Ernest that's Darlington okay. was an attempted murderer. Um, so he, he was a really inspiring self-help personality who wrote a book called Roots of a Man, Seven Principles for Growing Strong and Powerful. And he was a doctor and a psychologist who was on TV and radio and, and a, a lot. And his sort of specialty was inspiring young men to reject lives of gang living and, and, and violence and that kind of thing. And then he hired a hitman to kill his wife's ex-husband's father, and then he tried to hire another hitman to kill his stepdaughter's high school principal. And then he was sent away to prison. And his, his stepdaughter's high school principal he put a hit out on. Yeah, as an expert on nonviolence. But, hey, he may have been a <laughs> And pastor. finally, uh, you quote, and I mean it, I've, I did, uh, I hosted a show where Donald Trump was named Man of the Millennium. This is no bullshit. I hosted it. Uh, you, uh, Alec kidding? Baldwin. Oh my I'm God. not joking. And we did it at the Plaza Hotel. It was a packed room. The district attorney for uh, uh, the, the the city of Manhattan was there. And uh, Alec Baldwin was there. Movie stars, everything. I hosted it. And the real estate industry in New York gave Donald Trump Man of the Millennium. That's a thousand years. Wow. And, a thousand hell yeah. years. And he had he and the wife, and they don't smile. Nobody smiles. And he doesn't touch your hand because he's got OCD or whatever. He's quoted on humility from your book. That is Do true. Do you remember the quote? <laughs> Do you have the quote? You know? uh, y- yes. He said, um, he said, it's important to be uh, confident as you face the world each day, but you can't be too cocky. Anyone who thinks he's going to win them all is going to wind up a huge loser. And my, my my favorite thing about that quote is that he wrote that in a book called Surviving at the Top, which came out in 1991, while his real estate empire was unraveling under the weight of excessive debt born of his own grandiosity. Uh, there was a reviewer in the Los Angeles Times at the time who wrote that you know Donald Trump writing a book called Surviving at the Top was like if Marie Antoinette had written a book called Keeping My Head. <laughs> But he Why turns it around the, somehow, no? Yeah, he does. It's amazing. I wouldn't lend Donald Trump any money at all. And um, and the people that gave Bernie Madoff money, and I remember my accountant saying to me once, he goes, can you imagine giving somebody all of your money and they, and they won't let you talk to them about the investments or you can't ask and i said no i he said yeah he said that that's insane but they they do it all the time and i know a couple of people that i think invested with him because they would always say to me oh i don't buy anything i have this one guy that handles my stuff i swear to god one of the guys is, is kind of famous but yeah it's weird but the weird thing is is i've always thought that that pricks have a have an interview with another prick, and that's what and they, Bernie Madoff is a prick, <laughs> right? You. But they will hire like 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 the CEO, this guy Fold, uh, yeah. who was the Lehman Brothers CEO. A friend of mine uh, did a birthday thing for him. His uh-huh. wife had hired my friend did a video birthday thing for him. If you get a picture of of Richard Fold, F U L D, any of you listening. He's the meanest looking billionaire you've ever seen. He's just evil looking. My friend said he was so mean. He was such a motherfucker in this office. And this is years before he got caught. And around him, he said everybody around him was either scared of him or when they weren't around him, they were a prick also. I think pricks hire pricks is what I think. I think you meet a prick and you're a prick and you hire them and you go. There's some relating going on. Absolutely. That's why so many bosses are pricks. It's the only, I mean, yeah. when's the last time you heard someone say my boss is just a wonderful person or woman? You don't hear that too often. You just don't hear it. You don't ever hear it. No, and I think we'll yeah, hear it. Yeah, we a lot say here. it about they, oh, I mean, I can't that's go true. a day without hearing it in the hallways. So. Right. But don't you believe this, guys? If you're an asshole and about five really nice people come in and then an asshole comes in, you hire the asshole. <laughs> well, absolutely, and I think what's terrifying about this is not only do the assholes hire the uh, asshole, 
when it comes to sort of who we choose to be our inspirational leaders and our cults of personality, all of us non-assholes choose the assholes, too. They, no, they're braggarts. They're braggarts. They, you know, when they, somebody we, we writes a fucking memoir, <laughs> I, I and I would love to write one one day, and I go... But it makes you into an asshole as soon as you write this fucking it memoir sure about does. how how does an unknown person write a memoir and they fucking make it into the my father beat me my mother fucked me up the ass with a broomstick and I'm thinking <laughs> well Jesus fucking Christ and it's a bestseller you know you know the woman I hate this bitch that wrote the book called L Lovely Bones from heaven wrote the little girl had been murdered and raped and the book is about the little girl in the afterlife looking down on earth which is her name jody picolt christina do you know that woman i think that was her it's about a dead little girl who who looks down upon her family and her murderer i'm thinking she should die that writer should die alice That's Seabold. Alice Seabolt, excuse me, Jody Picoult. Um, I mean, really, Zach, I, I, could you write a book about a murdered little girl looking down on her killer? No, and, and I haven't and read it. I, I don't. I don't wish death on any fellow authors. Just, just <laughs> but um, I do. I, 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 I'm as well. You should, but uh, it, does, yeah. it does sound a little exploitive. Right. All right. Well, look, Zach. Thank you very much. Um, also, the author of Debt. Free you? What does debt free you mean? What the is that? book on paying for college, student loans, and such. And how to be richer, smarter, and better looking than your parents. Which that was the one most of your obnoxious best book title of all time. It was not my idea. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Jump it what was there. the yeah, idea? A disclaimer there. Yeah. What was the idea? What was no, it? No, it's a bit of guide for. It's a personal finance guide for new college graduates. Yeah, uh, I have a book coming out called "The Guy That Knocked This Knocks the Meatball Off the Christmas Tree." That's new. <laughs> You like that? It's a great title. Oh, so it's a, no that's too long. your name, Jay, on radio. Who? I'm afraid Who? I'll tell you after you get off the air. Who a tease. <laughs> oh, it's a tease. Okay. I don't want to Hey, by the way, uh, Zach Bissonette. Yeah. S Hold on. S. 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 All right. Soupy sales? Yeah. Zach Bissonnette. Uh, Sour good stern. advice for bad people. Quiet. Sour Selected shoes. wisdom from murderers, stock swindlers, and Lance Armstrong. I'm going to say something, and the man may be a guest on my show, and I know he's going to be on. Is he, uh, has, has the Williams sisters' dad already been on Howard's show? Yes, he was. Uh, Okay. Uh, did you hear the interview by any chance? I heard parts of it, and he said, like, the girls liked him for, you know, being hard on him and for him being okay. hard on them and stuff like that. Zach, have you ever read about him, the Williams sisters? Uh, uh no. Dad? I'm living, I don't know where, I'm living in North Carolina or wherever or somewhere. This is years ago. And this guy says he is training his two African-American daughters, uh. and he is training them in secret and they will be the most unbeatable duo, this is true, of of professional tennis players the world has ever seen. And this went on for years, and people were going, well, when are you going to put them in a tournament or whatever? And the fucker did it. <laughs> now, I'm sure his daughter, and they're multi-jillionaires and everything else, he fucking did it. He said it, and he did it. And they both look like, you know, linebackers for the Ravens. But nonetheless, uh, they're, f they're fabulous <laughs> fucking tennis players, you know. So, so there you go. Do you have children, Zach? No. Yeah. Well, okay. When you have one. When you have a child, try to make them do something. Uh, Get them when they're little and you, they don't, they won't do it. I've tried to make my children into something and they will not do it. And they're failures. <laughs> you even tried with us, and we don't do it either. Yeah, we don't Nothing. do anything at all. They won't do shit. They're failures. I have advised people. We had to throw a guy out of the studio just earlier who I've been advising for years. He's a failure. He's a total failure. <laughs> failure. Okay. All right. Hey, by the way, my other book is this. Live by the advice I've given myself. <laughs> The and narcissistic guide to life. <laughs> I got in trouble for this. I signed, an order. I signed an autograph once. So someone handed me a piece of paper, and I said, To Joe, 
Wishing you all the luck I wish myself. And he said, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I wish myself luck all the time. I don't know. These are bad titles. Uh, Zach Bissonette. Uh, good advice for bad people. Good luck with the book, Selected Wisdom from Murderers, Stock Swindlers, and Lance Armstrong. Uh, Ira, the weatherman, would you ever take uh, advice from a murderer? Uh, no, I would not. And all Jay, right. while what? we're talking about murderers, there's... Yeah. Uh, there's this what? person on the uh -huh. subway that's going yes. around with a hammer and hitting people over the heads, which is no really? goddamn good. If they catch did he him, give, did they he give me regards. Did he, him. <laughs> did he send regards to me? <laughs> no, he, he did not. Zach, Zach, you can hang up now. It's over. For us. All right, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, do we have another break, Brandon? Well, we, no, we, we got about late. four minutes left. All right. Another We're thing okay. is, Jay, mm -hmm. this Stretch weekend, no youngest for. Ira, no I wish I, I wish Julie was here with the fake laughter. <laughs> so you going to Atlantic, Atlantic City form. instead? I'm going to Atlantic City one day this week. <laughs> right, right. I'm through right. with Yonkers for a few months. That's Let's it. go now. Let's go now to the people that have decided to stop what they were doing and call us here at the Jay Thomas Show on Howard 101. Jim of Maryland, uh, how did the show go? Hello, today? Jim. Enjoy, oh, enjoy I thought yourself. the show was great, Jay. Really great. Yeah. Well, uh, you said that people who are assholes should write uh, autobiographies and memoirs and stuff. I think yes. that maybe surely. Surely should maybe write a book, Jay. Surely. That's right. That's, you know what? I laugh too much <laughs> all the way to failure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Uh, by the way, if your name is Jim, we've got a special right now. Jim of Ohio. Go ahead, Jim. Yes. Hi, Jay. This is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I just uh, I just tuned in. I was wondering where Shuli's infectious laughter was. <laughs> we threw him out. We yeah, you suck. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, all right, thank you very much. You I need suck. Out for that. Uh, let's go to uh, Joe of Toronto. That's fine. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Joe of Toronto. Yes, go ahead. Jay, we're just listening to a repeat of your uh, your other day show. There, who is the star yeah. guy to come on? Kenny. The oh, we have uh, Stoner Ken. Yeah, he's in. Uh, where is he, Christina? In California, California, Huntington Beach. He's, a, he's in Huntington Beach. Yeah, Stoner Ken. You like him? Hey, Jay, you got to have him on as a regular, man. Have him on every day, like for five minute segments or something. We were laughing so fucking hard. We were really? just, we were nearly pissed ourselves. It was hysterical, man. The guy, All right, what? what? The guy <laughs> from and holy All fuck, right. man. Wow. All, right. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. We'll have him on. <laughs> have a good one, Jay. Love you, man. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Jay. Let's go to. Wait a minute. Let's go to Big Tex of Texas. Go ahead, Big Tex. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love you, buddy. Good show. Uh, yeah. Lighten the load with Shula. He's a good guy, but today he took control. And where the hell? He did. did find, where do you find this guy that wrote this book? Is he actually a real writer? That whole story. Was no, you don't want to hear something. He's written about four bestsellers, <laughs> and this book is about uh, uh, asshole advice that people took. And all of the books he wrote about are bestsellers, also. So he didn't take books that didn't sell. And and he's correct. I hate. By the way, my hatred is even greater for a group of individuals who are so rich. <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote these chicken soup books, and my kids you know, went to school you're, with them. You're, 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 you're getting me in your brain set, too. I'm getting pissed off, too. Well, listen, this is how they became multimillionaires. They take people's stories, bullshit, so-called stories of inspiration, and they, nope. they gave them $10 or $40 or whatever, and they printed them in books, and they are worth hundreds of millions of dollars i see them all the time and and they're in our newspaper i want to fucking i i want to ram my car into their fucking range rovers and then write a fucking story how i rammed my car into the